If you're so lucky to play room music over a player that has infrared remote control, you're fine. If not, I might have a solution for you. Why would you need an infrared remote control for Rune? You use a tablet to pause and play. Well, if you're reading a book on a tablet or just browsing the web and the phone rings, it takes some time to switch to the Rune app and pause the player. You could of course also press mute on the app's remote, but then you miss out some music in your playlist. Anyway, I wanted to pause, skip forward and skip backwards using the Harmony remote I use to control all equipment in the room. If your amp has a remote that has buttons for matching equipment like a CD player, you can use that remote too. I'll explain it all. The trick is quite simple. Install Rupee Rune endpoint software on a Raspberry Pi, then buy a Flurk infrared sensor at 20 euros and plug that in one of the USB sockets of the Pi. No, you don't have to use the Pi for audio. You can if you want, but if you have a very nice Rune endpoint, you just keep using that. But I also run a Raspberry Pi with even a display that shows what music is being played that now also accepts infrared instructions for my remote. And all that without any negative influence on the sound quality. I have provided a link to the Rupee site below this video in YouTube, but let me give you the written name here too. When you install Rupee on a Raspberry Pi, it will enable it as a Rune endpoint. Any Raspberry Pi 2, 3 or 4 will do and packed into a housing it's this small. If you want to also output music from this Pi, I advise you to add a sound card to it, like the Allo Digi1 signature I use for this review. See my Raspberry Pi sound card review. When you add the Flurk USB infrared adapter, the Rupee software offers the option to have it control Rune for a specified Rune endpoint, or to be more precise, a Rune control zone that feeds the endpoint. The problem in explaining is that this is completely separate from the Rune endpoint function in the Pi. You can use the Pi as a Rune endpoint and have the Flurk infrared receiver control another Rune endpoint. Not that this makes sense, it's just to explain that these two functions are independent. When you add the Raspberry Pi touchscreen, you add even a third separate function that displays the music played and offers play, pause and skip back and forward through the touchscreen. And this could display the music played on a third endpoint. Again, an unlikely way of working. The realistic approach is to have the Pi function as a Rune endpoint, display the cover art and play, pause or skip the music on the touchscreen or infrared remote. By the way, the tablet or computer that you use to choose your music on keeps working as usual. It's the sound quality of the Pi with a sound card, spit of board or quality USB board is sufficient for you, this is fine. But what if you own a high-end Rune endpoint? Simple. You keep using that and don't use the audio endpoint function of the Pi. If you don't need a display, you just take the simplest Raspberry Pi, install Rupee and the Flurk sensor and set Rupee to control your Rune endpoint. You can connect the Pi over Wi-Fi, some models need a Wi-Fi dongle, and place it away from your stereo. It only needs to be in line of sight to your remote control. For more on Rupee and adding a touchscreen, watch my video Rupee Rune Bridge for Raspberry Pi. The next step is to tell the Flurk infrared dongle what infrared codes you are going to use. If you don't intend to use a Harmony remote, skip to the timecode below to see how other remotes can be used. Flurk is a programmable infrared receiver on a USB plug. Right out of the box it's programmed to match the Harmony XBMC profile. So in the Harmony app add a new device, enter Flurk as manufacturer and XBMC as device. If you already have an activity defined for playing music, 
edit that activity and add Flurk XBMC to devices needed to play your music. If you need to make a new activity, name it appropriately, for instance listen to music or just room, then follow the instructions on the screen and add not only the equipment you normally use but also Flurk XBMC as device needed for that activity. You might want to check what functions are mapped to what key on the remote. Being a Harmony user that won't be hard. Many remote controls used for amplifiers and receivers can also control a CD player, DVD player, tuner and so on. You can use these keys to control Jun's play pause and skip forward and back functions. We have to tell the Flirt dongle the codes we want to use for what function. To do this you need to download a computer program from Flirk.tv. Now versions for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. When installed and started you can choose from a number of remote control profiles which are just empty sets of controls. We want a profile that contains the play, pause, skip forward and skip back keys. I found the boxy profile appropriate. Now stick the flurk into a USB port on the computer and wait till the disconnected sign in the lower right corner disappears. Select the appropriate profile, I would advise to use Boxy, and click on the play button on the screen. Now press the key on your remote control that you want to use for play while pointing it towards the flurk dongle. When that input is accepted do the same for pause and the two skip keys. Leave the other keys for they won't work in Rupee. When you're done, quit the Flurk program, unplug the Flurk dongle and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. Now we need to install the Rupee software on a micro SD card. Download Rupee from the Rupee.org website and also download Etcher, the link is on the same page as the link to the Rupee software. Etcher is also available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Start up Etcher, select the Rupee image which probably is in your download folder, select the micro SD card as a target and press flash. Etcher starts writing the Rupee image and when that's done you can remove the micro SD card from your computer and stick it into the Raspberry Pi. Connect the Raspberry Pi to your network using a network cable. Even if you intend to use Wi-Fi you first have to connect a network cable to do the settings. I presume you already have the micro SD card in the slot on the Pi. If you're impatient you might want to temporarily connect a monitor or TV to the HDMI output of the Pi so you can see the progress on the screen. Then connect a power supply to the Pi and plug it in the main socket. Now it's time for the hardest part of the installation, waiting. Rupee analyzes the hardware used, downloads the appropriate software and makes the right settings to have the hardware function well. If you have connected a display, don't think the installation halted when nothing happens on the screen. Be patient. When the installation is finished you'll see a message on the screen with further instructions. If you don't have a monitor attached, go to an internet browser on your computer and type rupee.local in the address bar. When Rupee is fully installed, this screen will pop up. When not, try it somewhat later. Under the general tab you first see the name of this Rupee installation. Since I have more than one Rupee running, I change this into Rupee 1. If you intend to use only one Rupee, you can leave it. The next line says Audio Hat. HAT stands for hardware attached on top and is the equivalent of the expansion card for a PC. If you want to use a Pi for audio reproduction as well, you should buy a sound card if you want decent sound quality. There are cards with analog outputs, SPDIF outputs and with USB suited for quality audio. See my playlist Raspberry Pi for audio. The link is in the notes below this video on YouTube. If you have chosen a headboard, select the appropriate driver. Since this Rupee install does not do audio, I leave it to no head configured. Another Rupee install uses the Audiophonic Sabre ES9038 tech 
as you can see here. If you want to use a USB for audio, check this box and if you want it to start at a given volume, check this box and set the level below it. When no music is played, Rupee can display a digital clock so it's handy to set the correct time zone. Click commit changes and confirm, but don't reboot just now. Now we skip to the remote control tab. If the Flux dongle is connected, it will show up as a remote control. Then set the Rune control zone to the zone you want to control. Go to Rune, go to Settings and Audio to look for the control zone you want. Click on the name you gave it and copy it, Ctrl C or Command C depending on your computer. Now go to the Rune control zone box in Rupee and paste the name using Ctrl V or Command V. Click Commit Changes and Confirm. If you don't have the Raspberry Pi touchscreen installed, you can now reboot. If you do have the touchscreen installed, go to the Display tab and again paste the Rune Control Zone name in the appropriate box. If you would want to see another Rune Control Zone here, just enter the name of that zone. The orientation is a matter of gambling, 50% chance you'll have it right. Then there is one other thing to do. Let Rune know you want to use the Pi as a remote control. In Rune, go to the Extensions tab in Settings and activate the Rupee Remote Control extensions and you're ready to go. This is easily forgotten. I forgot it several times since I use Rupee. And it just don't work then. You can use a Raspberry Pi with Rupee as a Rune endpoint per song, preferably with a HAT soundboard. Add the Flurk infrared dongle and you can use it as an infrared control receiver for Rune too. Or add the touchscreen and you can use it as a Rune playing now screen with play, pause and skip buttons on screen. The latter two functions can each be coupled to any room control zone. And they won't influence the sound quality when using a high-end room endpoint. Normally both the touchscreen and the infrared dongle will be used to control the same room control zone. Or you will use just a Raspberry Pi with Rupee and the infrared dongle installed. That can fit in a small box like this and when connected over Wi-Fi only needs a mains outlet. A Raspberry Pi with power supply and housing will set you back around 65 euros. The Flurk costs 20 euros. Rupee is donationware. May I suggest you send 10 bucks to the author? Then you can use any infrared remote control to control Rune for less than 100 bucks. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuis and thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.